The game of jiu-jitsu is constantly evolving as the new generation takes on the sport at a young age. And out of all these new athletes, the Tacker brothers are some of the most accomplished in jiu-jitsu today. With William and Andrew both boasting incredible records and having notable victories, they certainly are the future of the sport. But what kind of creator would I be if I ever decided to back down from a challenge? I went to the Brazilian Fight Factory to take on William Tackett and other high-level athletes. Now there is no shot where I stroll into the gym and I challenge William Tackett and I beat him without even warming up. So let's see how I do in this first round if I can get any guillotines off. Now finally when this round starts I get somebody that wants to actually fight my hands. But the guillotine gods have gifted me with an arm in attack so even if he spins into me, it's completely useless. If you can't free your head or your arm, I'm just going to hold on to this until I have enough space where I can stand up and we can return to a neutral position. Now if you're looking for some quick takedown advice, remember this. We need to monitor their hips the entire time. Climbing the body to go to the choke is a great choice, but he allowed me to grab onto his head, which of course I used then to send him back to the shadow realm known as mount. Now the difference when I get mount versus when other people get mount that have been on my channel is that they're actually good at it. While I was able to sit here for a little bit of time, and I was floating on top looking for attacks to go for, he still managed to roll me over. But by doing just that, he activated my trap card which allows me to grab his chin. But since I was in Texas, I felt like wrangling a cow so I hit him with the cow catcher and threw him into side control. From here I just had to put my chest over his, flatten him out, and I got the submission. For the second part of this round, I took the bottom position. And the number one thing you need to do, especially if you're rolling with a headhunter, is you need to keep them pinned to the mat. I was able to sit up and play a seated guard, and even though my butterfly hooks weren't doing too much, the more time that I can spend upright gives me more opportunities where I can grab onto his head. And this is why you never give head for free. I'm taking advantage of him because I know both of his arms are around my legs. This gives me a free opportunity where I can grab onto the neck and get another submission. A good first round for a warm up, but now it's time for the main course. Now I've had a lot of roles in my time where I completely smash other people, and some other roles where I'm doing a great job auditioning for my career as an adult film star. But William Tackett is definitely the most accomplished athlete I've ever rolled with. So let's see how many quacks I can get done in a 7 minute round. Now I'm going into his territory where he's the world champ and I'm just some random YouTuber. It's extremely important that I puff my chest right now and appear stronger than I actually am. And I'm doing that by using an underhook and I'm trying to hit the body lock, but instead we end up in the over-unders. Now I just need to get the first takedown so I can set up my offense. Or I can just give it to him instead. I try and turn into him and potentially hit a switch, but instead he takes my back and he throws his hooks in. Which is a spot where I try and peel one hook and then turn them the opposite way so I can fall into their guard. But William understands the strength of the power half Nelson and he's applying as much torque on my neck as he can to try and make me roll over, and of course he's successful with it and now he has my back. And I do employ my typical back defense where I roll to one side while peeling the top hook and trying to hit the turtle, but he counters me by pulling my bicep and I can no longer control his leg. Which then of course he switches into a figure 4 and I'm in a world of pain. Now you'll see that I put my left arm under his leg because I'm trying to do Gordon Ryan's body triangle escape, but he pushes my primary hand out of the way so we can start setting up the rear naked choke, and now my left hand is stuck under his leg. Now after having enough time where it felt like I had a plastic bag over my face, I decided to tap. Alright, that's one point for the champ, but I'm sure things can only go up from here. We tie up and as I go for the underhook, he immediately clowns on me with a quick duck under and completely destroys my stand up. I wish I could say I had a good reason for why I let him do this to me so easily, but my excuse would sound like Biden giving a speech. That, 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 that. Notice when William is on top, he's spending all of his time monitoring my hips and lower back. He even tricks me to grabbing the underhook so he can go into the body lock. This allows him to pass around the backside and it completely kills my underhook in the process. And for good measure, he lifts my legs up so I'm no longer able to try and turn into him. William even shows off his dark side because he catches my hand and he actually tries to hit me with a wrist lock. But if he thinks I'm going to let him destroy my nightlife that easily, he's completely wrong. Unfortunately, he transfers his attack to my other arm and he hits me with the Kimura grip and he starts locking up a triangle. Now it's tough to tell what's going on because I'm flailing around like a white belt, but he's transitioning into an armbar as he locks up a triangle at the same time. But I think he took that wrist lock personally before because he went to the other side to hit me with the same attack and this time I had to tap. Now I would love to lie to all my faithful viewers and tell you that the round got better for me, but there is no possible timeline where I can say it's a good round if I got thrown on my ass by a headlock. And do you remember this guy's favorite move? Well it turns out that William is a fan of Basalt's Ben because he throws on the same submission to me, except for this time I don't get to call it fake because I was forced to tap out. 
It was around this time I realized the round definitely was not going in my favor, and this next move only further proves my theory, as he's gable gripping inside my leg over the calf, and then he starts rolling to hit me with a calf slicer. This is a technique where you may be able to tough it out and not actually be forced to tap, but there's no reason to do that in a training environment, so I took the easy way out and gave him another tap. Now to save my sanity, give this video a like, because this guard pass attempt was abysmal and I'm surprised my family hasn't disowned me yet. I was pressuring forward but he grabbed my arm and pulled his leg away so I had no post with my arms and he rolled me at the same time. I even smiled during the transition but inside I was crying. If you lower belts are ever wondering if black belts can have white belt days, I want to remind you this is more like a black belt having a pink belt day was that bad. And if you thought Sasha Gray like giving up back control, look at me. Once again I have William Tackett on my back and there's not much defense I can do from here. I have a tiny victory by catching his foot as he tries to pull me over so he doesn't get both hooks in, but this really doesn't matter that much because with enough hip rotation and moving me around, he's able to establish back half which is an awesome position for control. Now William's even nice enough that he decides to pull me back into the camera frame so everybody can watch me be put into this terrible position. And maybe I should have tried biting him since nothing else was working, but instead I was forced to tap. If you've watched this long because you want to see me have at least a little bit of success, this is your chance. William starts off by hitting me with an arm drag and he wants to take my back, but I throw the overhook in for the dogfight and then I roll into inside Sankaku. This is an excellent position if you want to attack the legs, to which he immediately counters by pulling out my legs and throwing us into 50-50. And while I'm constantly trying to develop my leg attack game, it's definitely not good enough for a local competition level and it's certainly not good enough for the world level. We can see that he's turning on his hip because he wants to expose my heels, so I walk my feet out to the side and I try and lock up a figure 4. My defense was working pretty well up to this point until he bumped me over to my hip and he caught my ankle. He was throwing on his own ankle guillotine and I gotta say, it's a lot less fun being on the defensive end. And another thing to say, I was sick of being tapped by this point. As the saying goes, sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail, but this time I was the board that the nail was getting hammered into. I'm just lucky this wasn't taking place on a casting couch. But at least from this role, I got to take away one victory. He threw me into the front head and after he was trying to go for a guillotine but I had too much weight in the opposite direction, he switched into an anaconda choke. To defend this, I needed to bring my head to the mat so it wasn't on his stomach and pushing his arm into my throat. Then I wanted to push his hips away and try and keep my shoulders as wide as possible. This gave him mount which of course was terrible and was putting a lot of pressure on my neck but not enough where I had to tap. Now I was able to roll out a mount and I fell into his guard where he switched off into a guillotine but the round came to an end and I took my small victory of not getting guillotined by him. Now despite getting absolutely destroyed by William who's a great guy and very easy to talk to, very humble as well. This was part 1 of me visiting this gym so make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything and if you want to have better jujitsu performances than I did, make sure to check out xmarshall.com. They have wonderful no-gi gear, they offer gis, and other items that you might find on their website that you would enjoy. There's no better way to improve your jiu-jitsu than to look better than you actually are. With these rash guards, you'll look stylish and get the result that you're looking for.